Following the $20 million fraud allegations leveled against the chairman of Airpeace, Alan Oyema, Ohanez Ndimu Youth Council and other social cultural groups in Nigeria have pleaded with the government and civil societies to protect the businessman. The U.S. Department of Justice indicted Oyema for bank fraud and money laundering. The businessman was accused of moving more than $20 million from Nigeria to a United States bank account in a scheme allegedly involving false documents based on the purchase of airlines. Although Oyema has denied the allegations against him, the U.S. government has issued an arrest warrant for the 56-year-old businessman. According to a statement released by the group, the Johannese Youth Council maintained that much as Nigerians will not object a legal action by any court in the world, we will never ever fold our arms akimbo and watch helplessly and hopelessly as one of our finest is being coerced and pulled down in broad daylight without an iota of any subsisting clear evidence from a joint investigation between the U.S. law enforcement agencies and Nigeria counterparts to determine the veracity of the claims before unleashing this dreadful move deliberately aimed at tinting the image of Oyema. To react to this development, we are joined by Jide Ologu, a legal practitioner on the telephone. Thank you for joining us. Now, the U.S. attorneys, good morning. The U.S. Attorney's Office has accused Alan Oyema of being involved in fraud and money laundering uh, charges to the tune of $20 million. What are your thoughts? At, at this point, I believe we are talking about allegations. And in the criminal justice value chain, when you have allegations like this, you give room to thorough investigation diligent prosecution, and of course, with a committed judiciary, you can either have conviction or the accused is released off the hook of allegations. And in law, we have this presumption of innocence. The accused person is presumed innocent of seal. That case is proved beyond all reasonable doubt. Because from him also has come a response that the issue concerning the purchase of aircraft in the U.S. that prompted this alleged money laundering and some uh, you know, irregular documentation, that that transaction was carried out through the Central Bank of Nigeria. So it may not be right to jump to conclusion now, uh, but we just have to monitor the trends. Those but having did... said that, okay. you recall also that recently the FBI arrested some Nigerians that, are, that were involved in cyber fraud, and the case is ongoing too. And talking about the American justice system, I trust the diligence of the system to get to the root of the matter. And I know also that the United States of America is also enlisting uh, Canada towards the arrest of the suspect if he is found in Canada. But for now, I don't want us to just conclude based on media um, disclosures and allegations. All right. The chairman of Airpeace has come out to refute the claims by the U.S. government. Do you think that this will have any bearing in the matter, or does it prove his innocence in any way? It, it, it does not. He has to establish it. Like I said, the next thing is probably for him to be arrested by the United States government and put to a trial. We can recall the case of uh, Chief Ibori the former governor of Delta State, who also was alleged to have been involved in some malpractices in Nigeria, but escaped all the long arms of the law. But he was arrested and then taken, you know, taken to the UK for trial and jailed for 13 years. But as you speak now, he's not been brought to justice in Nigeria. And recall also that recently, Adoke was ar allegedly arrested in the United Arab Emirates. And we are still going back and forth on that issue. So like I said earlier, it's a case that must be proved. 
And right now, we have not come to any conclusion on it. But like I said, I expect that the U.S. will be diligent in this matter. And if the Nigerian government thinks there is a case against him, we have Section 15 of Section 5 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended that puts the obligation on the government to abolish corruption and abuse of office. And so it's led to us to investigate, but I also read that the EFCC in Nigeria here is always investigating the financial transaction of this organization. But I maintain my position that it should be too early to come to a conclusion on this matter. Uh, there are speculations that this allegation could have been orchestrated by some aggrieved investors. That's what is in the media space at the moment. What's your take on that? Definitely there are stakeholders when we have allegations like this. You remember the Malabu scam. Many parties were involved and some government of other countries too. So if the U.S. is alleging that uh, 20 million naira, uh, million dollars, it was laundered somehow, they have to establish it. And of course, I understand that the EFCC also here is investigating some banks locally that were involved in it. And we have always said that we have cases of this character. Uh, you don't find a single person just carrying it out. There are institutions that may be involved, you know. And of course, generally speaking, if you look at the levels of corruption in Nigeria. There are stakeholders. It's now the business of the law enforcement agents to thoroughly investigate and where necessary convict the guilty and of course also where necessary release the you know, uh, vindicated accused person. So at this point in time there are accusations and um, I maintain my position that I won't come to a conclusion that um, he might be guilty of any allegations. Let's wait for... Let, let, me interject, let, let me interject and ask this question quickly. Um, you said earlier that the federal government, uh, if they uh, think it necessary, should go ahead and investigate him. But there are sympathizers that are urging the federal government of Nigeria to protect and stand by Alan Oyema due to his role in the latest xenophobic attacks in uh, South Africa. Do you see if, an investigation if, by the anti-graft body? If you ask me, on the platform of sentiment, that may be relevant. But we are talking of justice here, criminal justice. But these are allegations. So if there are wrongdoings, <clears throat> there is a need for redress. And of course, within the diplomatic relations of you, the country can do a lot. And I have an instant reference on that. <clears throat> Recall that recently also, Nigerians were arrested in Saudi Arabia and alleged to have peddled drugs, hard drugs. Some were executed, but the president, the federal government of Nigeria, went in on behalf of a particular accused person that the Saudi Arabian government released. So you cannot rule out the place of international relations here. You see, so, and it's a subject of uh, debate whether the country we want to protect the interests of a huge investor. Recalling also that recently, when we had a xenophobia attack issue in South Africa, the organization we're talking about now volunteered to evacuate Nigerians from South Africa back to Nigeria, which was applauded. And at that point in time, the, rest, the House of Representatives even you know, suggested that he should be honored. So that is on the platform of sentiment. But like we said, globally, there is a serious battle against money laundering, particularly when it's been paraded that this is a huge source of funding for terrorism and different forms of crime across the world. But again, I revert to my position that this organization 
and the chairman have chosen alleged to have been involved in the crime, which is subject to thorough investigation, diligent prosecution, and of course, the declaration by a court of competent jurisdiction, whether in America or in Nigeria. And I think what makes it a sensational uh, matter now is because it has an international coloration. But I believe we come to the root of all this. And then um, corporate governance cannot be overruled when it comes to business practices. But like I said earlier, that organization responded by saying they followed due process in their transaction. So if the uh, position of the organization and the position of the American government and the position of Nigeria now, and we have the concept of fair health, which is recommend, uh, recognized also by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So we cannot conclude at this point in time that he or the organization is guilty of an alleged crime. All right, Barrister, I'm afraid you have to leave it there. Thank you very much for your time on the news at this hour. We thank God. Thank you.